Every bubble application is a web application, which means that all of your pages have an address that you can get to through a browser. This is commonly known as the URL. Since every page in your application can serve a different purpose, the structure of the URLs may be different between those pages. You could have a simple page where it's just the name of the page itself, like this settings example. You may have a dynamic page, like a user's profile, where you want to have some identifier for that user in the URL, or you may have a more complex URL that carries more information to help with things like navigation on the page itself. The start of every page URL in your application is going to be your domain. So whether you're on Bubbles hosted domain or your own connected custom domain, this is the address that takes you to your app's index page. The index page is a built-in page. It's sort of the root of your application. So every custom page you add to your application, the name of that page is going to follow that domain. So this is the base structure for all of your pages in your application. Next, you can optionally append what are called path segments to your URL, where the page name is technically seen as the first path segment. And this is great for more custom navigation functions on your page, or even creating search filters, such as in a marketplace search. And Bubble has a few different ways of extracting your path segments so that you can carry out this functionality. Now, another way that you can send information to the URL is through URL parameters. And this is better if you're working with more dynamic data. And a parameter is made up of a key and value pair. That way you can swap out the values as needed. Again, Bubble has ways for you to extract the values of your parameters so that you can carry out whatever functionality you need. And you can work with multiple parameters at a time. You can even see URL parameters in action by just navigating your own app's editor. Take a look at the address bar. You're going to see the domain, bubble.io, then the name of the page. In this case, it's just the word page, and a handful of parameters to identify the page that you're working on in your design, the ID of your application, and a couple of other parameters to take you to the specific part of the editor that you're working in, so whether it's workflows, styles, design, and so on. Also, before we jump into dynamic page URLs, if you're looking for structured, all-encompassing help with your Bubble app, take a look at our Fast Track course, which helps folks cut months off their development time. We've taken our years of experience helping people build apps and pack the course full of practical guidance. Head to the link you see on the screen to see whether it would be a good fit for you too. In Bubble, you can also create dynamic pages. A really common use case for a dynamic page is a profile page. And so in the URL of a dynamic page, you're going to have an identifier of some sort to a database record. And Bubble actually has three different ways of creating IDs in a dynamic pages URL. You can use a slug. You can set up a backup field, which is kind of a combination of a custom field and your unique ID or you can just fall back to the default unique ID of that record. By setting up some sort of an identifier here for a dynamic page, you can support your SEO efforts and make things easier to share. Now, don't forget, your Bubble application comes with two environments, development and live. When you preview pages in the development environment, you're going to see the words version test in the URL. If you're on a higher tier plan where you have the ability to create custom branches, you're also going to see the ID of those branches in the URL. And then your live environment is not going to have anything extra added to the address of your pages. And finally, when you preview your pages in your development environment, Bubble's going to automatically add a URL parameter to enable a debugger. This is a troubleshooting tool to help you inspect your workflows and your visual designs. Uh, this is something that you can disable by just removing the parameter altogether or setting the value of that parameter to false.